At Top People It's Your Girl Adola, once again, the Nigerian government has arrested Nam De Kanu, the leader of IPOB. This time around, he was arrested abroad and extradited to Nigeria, where he's presently facing charges for stress Nebu felony instituted against him at the Federal High Court in Abuja. They said that he was campaigning for the Independent Republic of Biafra. Okay, before I say anything, actually, Nigerian government is not serious. Like, seriously, they are not serious. If you can spend this amount of time and money in arresting Nam De Kanu from another country, country extraditing him to Nigeria. Why haven't you done the same thing with Boko Haram and all these years? This means that if you actually want to go after the Fulani herdsmen that are killing people as well, that you would. And as well as the bandits that are kidnapping people, including hundreds of school kids. So, but to be honest with you though, we don't know exactly where he was arrested because the government said that he was not arrested in the UK because I think he's a UK citizen. But whatever the case may be, he must have been arrested somewhere abroad because we know he doesn't live in Nigeria. Maybe he was in transit and then they picked him up at one of those countries countries just like the Rwandan guy but whatever the case may be he was arrested somewhere abroad and extradited back to Nigeria so you can arrest somebody from abroad extradite them in all this is that we're talking about even if you put the same energy into fixing our road just roads alone or electricity only God knows where Nigeria would be so before saying anything at all I just feel like this government is not serious at all I realize whatever they actually want to do they will get it done in any case Abuba Kamalami the Attorney General and Minister of Justice has confirmed Kanu's arrest at a press conference. Nambi Kanu has, for your information, been intercepted through the collaborative efforts of the Nigerian Intelligence and Security Services. Okay, I want to say three things. Yes, Nam De Kanu has his fault. He calls for violence with his tweets and his radio programs. He tells people to get guns. And you know, I've said it before that this can lead to genocide, like that of Rwanda. So if you are not Igbo, the way Nam De Kanu talks sometimes is as if, as far as he's concerned, you are nothing if you are not Igbo. And even if you are Igbo and you don't support a secession, he speaks as if you are a betrayer. So me, I don't buy into his way of preaching violence. But this government, this Buhari's government is fighting the wrong battle. If you ask me, I think they are fighting the wrong battle. There's a reason why Nam De Kanu started agitating for secession in the first place. It is very important to address the main issue, not just the symptom. You know, if somebody has like a kidney problem and they are dying, they can't breathe, they are very weak, they are fatigued and, and they are dying, but all you are thinking about is, oh, this person has headache. How stupid is that? That is really, really dumb and you are trying to fix the headache. Even if you get rid of the headache, there are other symptoms and you've not treated the root cause of the problem. If you put Nam De Kanu behind bars, there are so many others who already bought into his ideology. People who are even willing to die to see Biafra become a reality. I mean, to see their own country named Biafra. I'm not saying that you have to deal with the real issue that started all this drama. If you are ignoring the real issue, it doesn't mean that it will go away. First of all, there has never been a time that people of different ethnicities are agitating to secede from Nigeria as it is during this time of Buari. It's not just IPOB. So many Yorubas are saying that they are tired that they want to leave. To inform you that the Yoruba nation has been admitted to the membership of UNPO and it represents a very important step in our collective quest to achieve the goal of dignity in the country in which we live and also to achieve the goal of self-determination. Some northerners are also saying that they are tired. The north before now is saying we don't believe in separation. But as I'm standing, I'm telling you that if there's going to be separation tomorrow, the north is ready for it. We are also ready. Let's go our either ways that they want to leave. Shouldn't all this tell our government something? For real though, if a child is throwing tantrums, you don't just keep beating the child. You first of all listen to what is bothering the child. You address it instead of just beating the child. And as the president of the nation, Buari is the father of the nation. Every part of the nation should feel like the president has their best interest at heart. He should be willing to listen to what they have to say. They should be willing to dialogue. Recently, Buari said that those agitating for Biafra were too young that they didn't know what happened during the Biafra war. To see the carnage of how we kill ourselves. I think those that are misbehaving 
They were either too young, they didn't know what happened. We will treat them in the language they understand. Okay, that's just what I'm trying to say. Pretending that something did not happen will not make it go away. You have to address the issue. Whose fault is it that a lot of young people don't know what happened during the Biafran war? When we don't observe a memorial day for the war in Nigeria, we don't even mark it. So many people are not even taught in school. Our federal government doesn't mark or hold a memorial for the victims of the war on both sides. Even even the soldiers that died during the war, we don't even know them. We act like nothing happened. Yet, Buhari is upset that young people don't know what happened in the 60s. How would they know when you keep denying what happened? I guess it's because the government will also be forced to admit where they were wrong in the equation. Maybe, I don't know, maybe that's why they, do, they don't want to admit to what happened. And this leads to my second point. Igbos have been saying for a long time that they have been marginalized. For decades, why is it so hard for this government to see that. And you know, they are not the only ones being marginalized in Nigeria. Look at the presidents and the heads of states that we've had in Nigeria so far since independence. Majority are from the northern part of Nigeria. No offense, but Agun Ironsi was the only Igbo president that we've had, and he was a military head of state who was only there for like six months, and then they killed him. Obasanjo and Shonekon, who was an interim leader for like one year, were the only Yoruba presidents that we've had since Nigeria became independent. Good Lord Jonathan was the only minority president. Meanwhile, we've had northern presidents and heads of states ten times. 10 different times in Nigeria. How is that fair to the rest of the country? And during this time of Buhari, almost all the key security positions in Nigeria are occupied by northerners. And you know all this is different from the 1953 Kano riot, 1966 Igbo pogrom. It's different from Abiola's death in 1996, the 2012 riot, and so on and so forth. If people are married and one party is not happy, you should be willing to listen to them instead of just insisting that they are trying to break up their union. They are trying to break up the country. In any case, I feel like arresting him the first time, you remember the first time they arrested him? I feel like that's what made him more popular in the first place. Why arrest him? And now they've arrested him again. And they probably feel accomplished right now. The young men feel, they ban Twitter, they arrested him, they feel accomplished. Oh, but honestly, I don't see how this is helping us regular Nigerians. Just invest the same energy into fixing our roads or our electricity, providing us with water and making life easier for regular Nigerians. But you have to first of all deal with insecurity we did not ban Twitter. We simply suspended indefinitely the activities of Twitter. Mm -hmm. Who's that? We did not ban Twitter. We simply suspended indefinitely the activities of Twitter. Are you out of your mind? We were discussing something very serious. Why can't ask oh, Jesus? Sorry, let's go back to serious issue before this one interrupted. Let me know what you think about Namdi's arrest and the fact that personally I feel like they can do more in arresting other people as well if they can get somebody arrested from abroad. Let me know what you think about how we've been fighting Boko Haram, herdsmen and uh, bandits all this while. Do you think that the government can do better in arresting the leaders of these groups as well? So let me know what you think about Namdi's arrest as well. You guys not do know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to South Africa, ladies and gentlemen, you guys remember my very own father, the former president, Jacob Zuma, as in Zuma my Zuma. The man has shown court orders to appear in person several times, you know. Well, guess what? The court has now sentenced him. The former vice president, they sentenced him to 15 months in prison for contempt of court. I'm like, what? Well, like, what? Well, what? I mean, I didn't know that a former president could be sentenced to jail in Africa. <laughs> Actually, that has happened before. But in any case, the court has given him five days to surrender himself to the police. The deadline is this coming Sunday, July 4th, in his hometown of Nkandla or Johannesburg. So, we're all waiting to see what would happen by July 4th. Do you guys think that Jacob Zuma will surrender himself or not? Let me know in the comment section because I'm, I'm waiting to see the drama that would unfold in South Africa. The judge that sentenced him, that is Judge Kampepe, said that Zuma attempted to corrode the legitimacy of the Constitutional Court by conducting a politically motivated smear campaign against it and against the commission and the judiciary. I'm like, okay. She also said that nobody is above the law. Mr. Jacob Gelechegisazuma is sentenced to undergo 15 months imprisonment. He is ordered to submit himself to the South African police within five calendar, calendar days from the date of this order. 
Wow, I love South Africans, man. Like, I love South Africans. Like, seriously, they say it the way it is. You see how they were talking about a whole former president, for, you know, the well South Africans. So, my mother, by the way, in case you're watching the judge, I wish that there were more African officials that would do their job just like you and hold people accountable for their actions regardless of their status. Meanwhile, let me read some of the reactions by South Africans on this Zuma story. I was like, okay. Ray Mula said, Zuma ordered to go to jail. Everybody is like, yes, finally justice prevailed. Next update, will will probably be Zuma is not medically fit to go to jail. He will spend 15 months at Unkandla under house arrest. <laughs> And Zaka Hossein Mafi said, let's see if he actually does go to prison. Exactly. Like, it's one thing to sentence him. I appreciate that, you know. But will he actually go to prison? And then Lisa said, how interesting. Let's see all the other folks that are plundering the resources go to prison as well. This is no accomplishment until all those who rob and steal from the continent of Africa also go to prison. That's true. That's true. It's not just Jacob Zuma. Also, Hilo Gika. I'm sorry I didn't say your name correctly. But this person said democracy at work, but it is only the first step in rooting out corruption and judicial defense. The court really showed some backbone. The world should take note. Thank you so much, my brother. So, Herman Mashaba said, today's judgment is a victory for the rule of law in South Africa. It's clear for all to see that Jacob Zuma's attempt to ignore, undermine, and destroy the rule of law will not be tolerated in our democratic society. Nobody is above the law. I agree with you, Herman, but let's see him actually go to jail. I mean, I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. The lot of engineering said, I wish Zuma doesn't present himself to the law enforcement within five days. I want to see Becky Sele working for his salary. We all want to see what would happen actually. I mean, I personally don't think he will go to jail, but hey, that's me. I think between now and the deadline, they will come up with something. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you think that Zuma would actually go to prison or not? You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm sure you guys must have heard that there were three bombings in the city of Benin. The first one detonated inside a Catholic church and injured two women. Also, the second one detonated outside of a bar and did not injure anyone or kill anyone. And the third one detonated by a petrol station on the outskirts of the city and did not injure anyone. Well, the government has put a curfew in place due to the bombings and hearing of more planned attacks. That is scary. Now, an Islamic terrorist group, that is an organization named Islamic State Group Central Africa Province, or ISCAP for short, has claimed responsibility for the bombings, and they said that they were targeting Christians. But to be honest, I really hope that the government of the DRC would get this under control on time and do something on time before this group grows wing. Because trust me, it was like yesterday when Boko Haram started in Nigeria, they also said they were targeting Christians, but now look at where we are in Nigeria, because our government did not do the needful on time. So, I heart goes out to those that were injured and we'll keep you guys posted on what's happening there. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> And moving on to Ethiopia, we told you guys that Ethiopia was having their election upper week Monday. We still don't know what is happening. Like, who's winning? They said they are still counting. So it's taking a really long time. We really don't have much update when it comes to the Ethiopian election. We're hoping that soon that we'll have an update for you guys. But for real, this is, like, really interesting that it's taking this long to hold an election or to know the result of the election. But we just wanted you guys to know that we're keeping our eyes open and we're trying to find out exactly what's happening in Ethiopia. You guys know no much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> And we are back to Nigeria. So before I talk about this last story, if you have kids watching, you may not want them to watch. I mean, we're not showing anything graphic, but um, it's a very, I don't know, it's an adult story, <laughs> kind of, but a very sad one as well. So this is a huge disclaimer before we even talk about what happened. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you must have heard, Super TV CEO Michael Usifo Ataga was killed by his side chick, 21-year-old Chidima Ojuku, a student of Unila. Chidima said that they began dating like four to six months ago. Allegedly, they would smoke weed and drink together before sex. And then on this particular day, she said that she didn't like how he came on her or something. I have eaten. So he too was on his own couch. Then he came on to me. He became violent or trying to get to me. And I was resisting and defending myself. Lee on the kitchen cabinet while he was choking me. And then I stretched out the knife and then I stabbed his neck. 
So the two had rented an Airbnb in Lekki for them to have fun. Allegedly, they started taking drugs and got into a heated argument about having sex. She said that he hit her first and that she hit him back. But then she proceeded to stab him multiple times, including at his neck. And then once he was stabbed, he was dead. She took his ATM card to withdraw five million naira. And then she went back to her parents' house. She actually wanted to withdraw more money, but the bank did not allow her. First of all, if she was actually taking advantage of like she tried to paint it, I mean, that would be a different thing. But she knew what she was doing. What were you doing with a married man in the first place? See, I've never understood what side chicks do with married men. And this is not the first time that you're going out with this man. Not only did she kill him, but then she stole five million naira from his bank account after she killed him. Somebody whose life is in danger, like she was trying to paint it, wouldn't go to the ATM. She would call the police. You know, this man was trying to rape me. Oh, I didn't mean to kill him. Oh, no, no, she didn't call the police. She went and withdrew money. And then she went home like nothing happened. Didn't even tell her parents what had happened, which was probably why her dad tried to prevent her from being arrested when the police showed up because he didn't know what had happened. Meanwhile, why would somebody marry to this beautiful woman have a side cheek? I mean, not only is she beautiful, but she's really smart. She's very successful. She has more than 15 years experience in the oil and gas sector. So that's a successful woman, a beautiful woman. I don't know what else the husband was looking for. Some people are carrying rumors that the wife conspired with the side chick to kill him. There's no evidence of that, but you will see that story as well. In fact, the family is asking bloggers to please chill when it comes to this story. So we really don't think that is true, but the story is out there. So don't be shocked if you see that story. But whatever the case, maybe he had a side chick and the side chick was the one that killed him. I honestly don't understand why some Nigerian men have side chicks. Maybe somebody can educate me. I don't get it. I'm a 21, 21 year old girl. He was killed on the eve of his 50th birthday which means that he was old enough to father the girl that he was sleeping with. How does that even make sense? Like I said neither of the party is a saint. The sad thing now is the family that they left behind. Just imagine the woman getting a call that her husband had been killed by his side chick or his children and getting a phone call that their father was killed by a side chick. Even the parents of the girl being told that your 21 year old daughter has killed somebody. I'm like, mm -mm, parents, we really need to do more. We need to be more involved in, in our children's life. Don't ever say, oh, this cannot happen to you. I don't know her parents, too, but I feel like so many parents are too busy to even notice some things in their children. I mean, she didn't start today going out with men. You have to pay attention and do a better job of raising them. It's not enough to get them into school or to buy them things. You should know the type of friends that they have as well because she said that it was some of her friends that introduced her to big boys some last year or something and for university and polytechnic students or college of education students that may be watching me i'm begging you my sisters please stop dating married men for crying out loud how would you like somebody coming in between your parents somebody dating your dad how would you feel and there's something called kamafa and to all the fathers out there that like to have side chicks let this story be a lesson to you we'll keep you guys posted on her case you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real before I leave, my shout out of the day goes to a viewer by the name Marcus Joshua Nathan. He's Nigerian or Cape Verdean American. How do I say his dad is Nigerian, his mom is from Cape Verde, and then he's also American, so we claim him as our son. Congratulations, Marcus. We're so proud of you. He graduated from high school in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and he'll be going to college this fall. And of course, he's always the tallest wherever he is. You will never believe how tall he is. I actually have a picture with Marcus, but I said, mm -mm, do not put off my photo. I said don't put off my photo. Did you not? Now people will start thinking that I'm short. Never mind. Marcos, we just want to say happy graduation. We're so proud of you. And huge shout out to his younger sister who turned 16. Happy birthday, Naya. We love you. They're viewers of the show and we just wanted to give them shout out. And real quick, I got an email from two Nigerians actually who decided to remix the Canadian national anthem, O Canada. I mean, you guys have to listen to this. We'll play a little bit of it, but we'll put the link in the description below so you can watch the entire video. It is so good tomorrow is canada day july 1st so we wanted to feature it on canada's day july 1st so that you guys can get to hear it in their email they said that the song is a collaborative effort between yemi tpx and a friend who is ayodele odeyemi also known as ayd senator who is a canadian citizen and the chief executive officer of african ad with the partnership of some other stakeholders both in canada and nigeria so they remix canadian national anthem and they made this music video and it is really good please leave a comment below let them know how 
how you feel about this song. Please, no hating. <laughs> Please don't say things like, why are you passionate about another man's country? Come home and build your country. Or, you know, like just, is it that you like the song or you don't like the song? It's not that big of a deal. So please leave nice comments for them <laughs> when you watch the song. Or you can go and watch it on their YouTube channel. We'll put the full link in the description below. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, O Canada, the African version. A big people thrown up the land of freedom. From far away, we stand on God for you. A big people thrown up the land of freedom. From far away, we stand on God for you. Our home and our native land. In God, we will trust. Be the glowing land. We will see. The full link is in the description below so you guys can watch it on their YouTube channel. Before I sign out, guys, don't forget to contact Help Me Work Out to help you with all errands that you need to run in Nigeria and Ghana. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'm watching your Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I'm going to see you all later. Peace out.